doodles. They're so much fun. But is it possible to say that my doodle is a bad dog? I think many of you will agree only when you want to brush them. Well, today I'm going to change your mind about all that so that you can change their behavior when it comes to brushing and grooming. Doodles are one of my favorite breeds to groom. In today's demo, we're going to work with three different breeds, three different behavior scenarios as well. The first one is a Labradoodle that is nervous when groomed. The second one is a senior Bichon who is only difficult to groom simply because he's old. The last dog in our demo today is a miniature Schnauzer that is only difficult to groom. She lacks confidence on the grooming table which makes her unpredictable. As per requested from my viewers, let's roll it! I am certified pet professional Amy Lee. The only difference between you and your groomer is knowledge, techniques, and tools. It is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the grooming industry. I will give you the knowledge, teach you the techniques, and show you the tips and products that will only produce winning results. So stay put as we get started on this journey together today. I will guide you to success in brushing, de-shedding, and de-matting your dog. Subscribers of this channel will have access to exclusive industry secrets. From live demos to exclusive house calls, together we will increase the bond you share with your pet and add even more value to their lives. So this is Patty, guys. Patty is a Labradoodle. She's a very nervous dog. Um, she's never mean. She's just nervous which makes her a little difficult to work with sometimes. Today, I'm gonna use her for a little bit in this demo, but we're talking about dogs today that are nervous, scared, hard to work with. You can say uncooperative at times. Often it's not purposeful. It's because they're afraid. We gotta keep that in mind, you know? If they're afraid, we gotta try to work with them, make them feel better, make them feel more confident about the situation that they're in and then their behavior will reflect that. Right, Patty? <laughs> okay, good girl. If you have a dog that you're having trouble keeping in an upright position on the table, let's say, um, a lot of dogs, when you when you mess with around their behind or their tail, they wanna sit right away, which Patty's actually being very good. Usually she tries to sit to protect herself. That's why they sit. Um, one thing I like to do, if, if you just put if you put your hand under their abdomen like this, that automatically they will stand up all on their own if they're sitting. So if I could get her to sit. Patty, Patty, can you sit? Sit, Patty. That's a good girl. Good girl. Okay, so she's sitting. Now I'm going to show her how you can easily get her to stand up. I'm not even going to say anything to her, guys. Watch this. This is all just with working with her. See what I did? All I did was touch her. I didn't push her. She goes right up. If I want her to stay up, I just keep my hand right here. This is a, it's a good place because it reminds them that you have your hands on them. So they, it reminds them that you're working with them. It's a good thing. It'll help you move through your grooming with the dog, whether it's brushing, trimming, whatever. And obviously if I'm trimming, I can have a, this hand right here on Patty and just as easily trim her. But having my hand here reminds her to stand, to stay standing. That's all you got to do. I know some of you are fighting with your dogs. They want to sit every time you take your hands off of them. Keep that in mind. It's when you take your hands off of them, then they decide what they're going to do. But when you have your hands on them, you're reminding them of what you want them to do and that they are listening to you because you touched them like this. You're touching them. It reminds them that you're here and that you have a need from them. Okay? I think it's pretty cool. I think you should try it sometime. Just practice with your dog. Just getting them to behave on a table. Um, a lot of people I know groom their own dogs at home, and I think that's great. And I hope that there's things on my channel that can help you people accomplish that. That's why I'm doing this for for you taking care of your pets at home, for groomers or anybody that, that needs these tips. But I'm sure there are a lot of things you struggle with when you're trying to groom your own dog at home. One, one thing may be brushing. Brushing is something your dog doesn't want to tolerate. 
I mean, that's typical. You're not alone, guys. So first thing I'm going to tell you, if you groom your own dog, let's say, okay, Patty's a golden doodle. She, I think her groom costs, I think it's about close to $70 if I'm correct. I'm not, I, I don't know. I'm not saying it at my computer. I'm pretty sure it is around $70 for Patty. It's a lot of money. Let's say your dog needs groomed every 12 weeks. That's every three months. $70, that's a little bit of an expense. Now they do need grooming, so, you know, it's ne it's necessary. If you buy yourself a portable grooming table, which I will blast one up on the screen right now, you might spend $100, $120. A portable grooming table can easily fold, the legs will fold down and you can put it in a closet. Something to think about is getting a, a grooming table. You're gonna need a good grooming arm. Now, this particular table that we're working with with Patty, this is an electric table. This is a nice table. I don't expect you to buy this. <laughs> it's a Viper. I don't know, $2,500 table. But I'm a groomer, so I need it. But I know you guys aren't gonna spend that kind of money. You don't need to. You can spend $120, $150, $160. If you're doing the grooming yourself, you're saving yourself that money anyway. You're not going to have good success with a larger dog especially. I take that back with any dog. If you don't have a grooming table. When they're on this table, they need to behave. They need to... Let's get her to stand. There she goes. Good girl. They need to do what you need them to do. It also helps you um, increase the bonding with your pet because they're they're having to trust you very much so in this situation so i suggest anybody doing grooming at home needs to invest in a portable grooming table that is strong enough structurally wise to hold their size dog if you have patty's patty's probably about 50 pounds i'm guessing so you know you need to know the weight of your dog and you need to make sure that the table that you purchase is substantial enough to hold that weight of your dog and you definitely don't want a small table for a dog for many reasons it's dangerous they could fall off they could flip the table secondly you need room to work you need room to put your you know your tools um, it's nice to have some working room when you have your dog up on a grooming table right Patty she says yes <laughs> let's try that one more time sit good girl very good now watch guys, I'm not even gonna talk to her, I'm just gonna touch her. I want her to stand up. See, that's how you get your dog to stand up. You don't have to force them up. You just put a little pressure under that abdomen, reminds them, oh, she wants me up, okay. And they should stand up on their own. Keep your hands on them when you're working with them, when you're brushing, and they will be a lot a lot more cooperative for you. Please let me know if you've tried any of these tricks and tips in the comments below or if there's any areas that you struggle with with your dog when you're grooming them at home or if you're a professional, whether that's brushing, bathing, nails, trimming, whatever. So guys, this is Colby. He's just an old man now. I've been working with Colby for at least a decade. He's a wonderful old dog, but he's gotten older. Colby, it's me. I'm right here, baby. He can't see as well anymore. He can't hear as well anymore, just like most old dogs and all old people. We all age. However, Colby still needs a lot of grooming to keep him healthy. So he's a little more challenging these days because he's losing those senses that dogs depend on so much, his sight, his hearing. It makes them vulnerable. It makes them feel afraid more because they really do depend on those, those senses. I'm going to brush out Colby as best I can before the bath. As you can see, he's, you know, he, he gets to looking a little rough looking, but he bounces right back. He, he cleans up real nice. So I'm going to thoroughly brush him out before we give him a really good bath and get his skin clean in the tub. Kobe has always been so good to groom, so easy. He's getting to be a little more of a challenge because of his age. 
And I have to be even more gentle with him because of his age. His skin is sensitive. His, he's definitely, he definitely has arthritis. They all get it. Um, and he's a little more fearful simply because he's an old dog. He, he's only comfortable at home laying on the couch with mom and being with his family. Those are, those are the comforts for an older dog. Those are the things that, that make them feel content. So him being here today and away from home is, is stressful already. And along with that stress comes a little more added responsibility with grooming him. Because he's stressed, he can be a little unpredictable in his movements. And I also want to try to keep him in a calm state so that this grooming experience is not something bad for him. He'll get through it. I want him to get through it nicely without stress. I don't want to stress out an older dog or any dog, you know. So he's already calming down a lot. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of that is due to the fact that I'm talking. I'm talking to you guys, but he hears my voice and he's kind of focusing on that right now. He's a little distracted by everything else that's going on. And he's thinking, he's listening to my voice. It's distracting him. So that is one thing that I can tell you guys is a good thing if you are having challenges grooming your dog or grooming a client dog. Talk to them. Still do what you have to do. As you can see, I'm still doing what I have to do. However, I'm talking a lot. And he's distracted by that so there's a good tip for you guys some of you out there have some some difficult dogs to work with you don't have to talk to them like they're a baby and you can hear I'm not talking to him like he's a baby I'm talking to you guys but I'm talking and he's hearing that if I talk to him like a baby you know then he may like that some dogs might but I'm not what I'm doing with him right now with grooming I don't want to baby him. I want him to be confident. I need him to be confident and accept what we're doing together because he has a role to play in this groom too, not just me. And I think you guys should keep that in mind when you're working with dogs, grooming them, brushing them, bathing them, even if it's your own pet. Um, Kobe has calmed down a lot since since he came in and we started working together today. He's always been a good boy. It's just age for him now, guys. That's all. It's just age. Yeah, he's a good boy. So after I get him brushed out, I'm going to bathe him and clean him really good and dry him. I'm going to easily remove all this eye gunk in the tub. If you guys aren't sure how that goes, I have a video, I will post it in the YouTube card right now, on how to remove debris from your dog's eyes and mouth, specifically, as a lot of dogs suffer from that. Yorkies, Poodles, Schnauzers, Shih Tzus, Bichons, obviously, which he is a Bichon. Go and check that video out if you're questioning how, how to approach that, removing all this eye buildup that dogs often get. And it, it can be quite severe, especially in an older dog. And he is an older dog. And as he has aged, this has become a lot more of an issue for him. But it can be removed very easily, not with force. I'll show you in that video, so make sure you watch it. I'm going to show you some footage afterwards um, of me actually giving him a little bit of a trim and a haircut. And the reason for this video today is to show you how to work with a dog that may be difficult or scared or unable to stand much because of their age or health problems or whatever. There are still ways that we can get the job done and get it done comfortably for the pet because that's, that's the goal. That is the goal. He needs to be groomed, but he also needs to be treated with complete compassion and respect.
I have my finger, can you see that? In the grooming loop, which I actually use that, and I now hold his, his, under his jaw, and I can guide him this way. You know, I can move him around. If he's being uncooperative, I, I have a little more control over his movements if he decides not to, not to let me do this. And you don't want to force him and be real forceful about it. You just have to be in control. When you're in control and you are handling them in a manner that you're in control, they know that and then they can relax, believe it or not, because they don't feel like they have to worry about anything, that you've got this under control. They just have to submit to it. That's all they have to do. Chloe, she's a miniature schnauzer, and today she's going to demonstrate for us how to gain a little confidence with your dog on the table. And that's important because when they're feeling confident, they allow you to work with them much, much easier than if they're feeling vulnerable or threatened or fearful. So how we do that, I chose Chloe because she is typical for wanting to cower down on the table. So see if I give her more lead she will kind of hang her head you know she doesn't look very proud right well she's not she's feeling vulnerable so we want her to feel confident by doing so we want her to stand nice we want to put her chin up get her confidence boosted before we start working with her when she's feeling confident she'll allow us to work with her a lot better if they're hanging their head bring that head up believe it or not they automatically gain confidence. If they're standing nice and straight, they gain confidence. That's good. So I'm also going to show you another important technique and tool that we like to use is the groomer's helper grooming lead. It's fully adjustable, but I'll tell you, I'm going to show you why this lead is, is in my opinion, better than most out there on the market. This is going to hook here, but first we are going to put it on Chloe like a collar spin that around you'll notice it has this hook this is going to be underneath her right underneath her her jaw then we can slide this down make sure we can comfortably get two fingers in there and lock it into place so it's now it's adjusted to fit Chloe I'm going to take this other leash off this is not a groomer's helper lead we're going to get rid of that I'm going to put her on the groomer helper lead so we have to adjust the grooming arm to fit Chloe. This is the way you want to have your groom. See how she's skitty? That makes her a little bit challenging to work with. So we have this on. She's got plenty of play in there, just enough, but she can't slip out of it. You want this pretty taut because we want her head to stay up. That gives her confidence, remember? And now with this hook right here, what I would do, I use an old grooming loop. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty tattered. So you can hook her to put, wrap that around your grooming arms so that it just gives her enough room to, you know, wiggle a little if she needs to. But the nice thing about this, and you want to slide this down. So this is pulling down on on the lead because now believe it or not this is giving her a lot of room as you can see my finger through here it's giving her a lot of room to breathe but it's still very snug and it keeps her in position on the table where she needs to be so now we have her positioned with her head up so she will be easier to work with it is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the grooming industry so you can provide quality care for your beloved pets at home. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell because together we are going to increase the bond you share with your pet and add even more value to their lives. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you found anything that I've shared with you helpful, please share that with me in the comments and with the, the rest of us. We're all working together here. Have a good day, guys.